Hey there, I'm Tyler, the host of Wake Me Up, the only guided morning routine podcast. No matter how you'd like to start your day, Wake Me Up has something for everyone. Whether you'd like a calming meditation, some easy yoga and stretching to wake your body, or an inspirational talk to get you motivated for the day, you can find all of it on Wake Me Up. So trade the snooze button for an episode of Wake Me Up and see how your days change. Just search Wake Me Up and your favorite podcast player. Do you know the saying, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today? Well, there's some truth to that. How we start our morning has a huge impact on our mood and productivity throughout the rest of the day. So start changing your days and your life with the number one morning routine podcast, Wake Me Up. Whether you'd like to start your day with a calming meditation, some easy yoga and stretching to wake your body, or an inspirational talk to get you motivated, you can find what you're looking for on Wake Me Up. So tomorrow, when your alarm goes off, don't press the snooze button over and over. Press play on an episode of Wake Me Up and kick off a fantastic day. Just search for Wake Me Up in your favorite podcast player. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this Welcome to Trick or Triviality 6. I still know what you did the summer before last summer, right? Is that what it, what it is this year? I still know what you did the summer before last summer. That's correct. The game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of uh, scares and thrills. Yeah, uh, number six. Yeah, number six times. Trick or Triviality. Mm-hmm. Can Jeff? you believe it? We're still alive. We are still alive. Jeff, what about your candy? How are you enjoying your candy? Oh, I love candy. This is my favorite time of year. What's your favorite candy? Snickers. Oh, I thought it was... I uh, would have to think about it. I thought it was peanut butter M&M's. <laughs> no. I love peanut M&M's, but my, my official favorite candy is Snickers. Okay. Matt, favorite candy? Uh, favorite candy would be... Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, probably Baby Ruth. I like the Baby Ruth. Oh, you guys really like the nuts and the candy bars. I don't like nuts and chocolate. Yeah. That's nuts of you. It is nuts of me. I can't believe this is the sixth one. The sixth sequel is usually the worst, isn't it? <laughs> it's one and, of the worst. And we're, uh, we're, we're well on the way, Matt. That's what we are well on the way. <laughs> while uh, while Ken uh, introduces uh, what's going on today, I'm just going to look up the best number six sequels because I'm really curious. It's definitely Airbud. Yeah, Airbud probably. Uh, and then obviously you have Halloween number six, which is uh, I believe is that the one with uh, Paul Rudd? Yes, it is. There you go. That's Tommy Doyle, classic role. Classic role, very For crazy role. The Curse of Michael Myers. All right. Great. Well, um, it's, it is Trigger Triviality 6. Uh, Jeff, you said before we started recording, you never thought we'd get to this point. That is true. Ken, you said you thought you'd be dead. I, I said that, yeah. And Matt said, why am I here? I always say that. You do. Uh, but we're excited to be here. Um, this is our first um, triviality, trivi- Trigger Triviality episode on Airwave. So... We mentioned oh, it up at the top, Airwave Media. That, uh, it's a treat for us and all of the listeners. It is. You may be hearing some ads now. You're uh, treated to some ads. Yeah, you are treated to some ads. If you don't <laughs> want a trick, we're going to keep doing. It. If you don't want razor blades in your treats, you can uh, go to Patreon and uh, get every, all the episodes ad free from the main feed. Turns out that just like real life, that also never happens. That's true. It doesn't happen. But uh, you can still go to Patreon and, and get all of our episodes ad-free. We just want you all to know that we're still releasing those ad-free if you're over there. Uh, if not, uh, we hope you like some of the products. We're going to start picking them pretty soon uh, for some host read ads. And once we know what they are, we'll let you know. And um, you know, Ken was really excited about getting the products here in studio to try. Only the finest of products. Right. So if we get a <laughs> mattress, are we just going to record Do on the mattress? That, that brand name? or Oh, oh I guess. Because they didn't give us anything. Oh, yet. that's true. They, no... It is seasonal on brand. Well, I did say for mattress for Halloween. Oh, yeah, I said That's on three a... bleeps, guys. Stop saying the <laughs> brand name. So I'm going to change the brand name so you don't have to bleep this part of it because on a previous episode, it might have been a previous trick or triviality. I said that the mattress we were sleeping on was made from the uh, ghost of of Devin Sawa of, of Dev, uh, dead Devin Sawa. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, speaking of uh, dead Devin Sawa. 
we have a, a really special guest here today, uh, truly a sequel, unlike many other years, because uh, he's back for more carnage. And uh, our host <laughs> our host today, uh, you may have heard him on last year's Trick or Triviality, is Justin Shady. How are you, Justin? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me back. Of no problem. Of your, your questions last year were so brutally disgusting and offensive that we wanted to have you back for a second round. Well, hopefully uh, this sequel doesn't suck. Yeah, you know, we'll see. I think uh, these are also pretty, some of them are pretty brutal. So, uh, you know, listener beware, but. Uh, no, yeah. I was just joking about see. that. They were great last year and I'm sure they're going to be great Thanks. this year. Yeah. So I guess a little bit Thanks. of a um, warning, I suppose. So they might get kind of dark. So maybe listen to this one first by yourself before the, the kiddos, I guess. Yeah. Or um, if you're especially sensitive to that kind of stuff. Gruesome stuff. Gruesome stuff. Yeah, maybe maybe give it a pass or, or wait a little bit, um, you know that kind of thing. And and because uh, we love you guys, we don't want you to. Right. We don't want to creep you out. So. We all float down here, but maybe you don't want to float with us. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was to say, much like last year, I'm guessing that this is going to range from, you know, Halloween and Halloween themes that you would see in movies into sort of the true crime and stuff like that. So, just I would uh, guess so. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, heads up. Yep. And uh, thank you, Justin, for. Being a patron, of course, so we appreciate it. And uh, just remind people who you are, uh, what you do, and uh, where you live uh, if they want to come Who's to your you. daddy and what does he do? Yeah. My, <laughs> uh, I am Justin Shady. I'm a writer uh, living in Chicago. Um, I, I write some film and television stuff. I, uh, you know, last two years I've just been trying to stay sane. So that's about it. It's uh, Trick or Triviality 6. Uh, we know the characters. None of us have gotten killed off yet, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully one of us will this time. But uh, we're, who are we going to partner with? Uh, I'm going to take Matt here. And we're going to be 500 Days of Midsummer. And that's Midsommar. Midsommar. Okay. Like the uh, the Miss Flo uh, movie. Florence Pugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Cool. And uh, <laughs> Jeff. Um, I you... thought you were talking about of insurance. <laughs> well, she's I'll in that too because they haven't given us money either. <laughs> That'd be a great episode or a great uh, version of Midsummer if she was in that movie, um, talking about insurance while uh, there's a, a person in a bear suit and everything. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, <laughs> Jeff, our team name. Uh, we just combined three uh, horror movies, uh, Halloween type movies, and we're going to be Happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. And just for all you fans of Joe Piscopo and Trent Williams out there. Dead, Dead Heat is a great movie. It's on 4K now. It's it's terrible, but it's awesome. So check it's it out. Just you. You're the only one who's a fan of that meal. I think I'm the only one who's bought bought the movie. But so we have a special rules read today. Somebody said they were dressing up as Hank Hill for Halloween. So who is that, Neil? That was Andy Warnock. Yeah, not really. But here's a good impression of Hank Hill as uh, doing the rules. The rules of the game are simple. Twenty questions split into two rounds worth ten points apiece. At halftime, there will be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter a final round with the points that they have accumulated, and they will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. Whoa! Now I'm living in a nightmare, and I am the cream. Thank you, Andy. And uh, Justin, uh, looks like we're ready uh, to go over here. So we have all our chainsaws I'll and tell weapons you what. and scythes. And, is that what it is, scythe, right? I always forget it. All right, thank you. So yeah, we're ready Simple. to go. All right, uh, round one, question one. Mine is Robert. Created by Wes Craven, Freddy Krueger first appeared in 1984's Nightmare on Elm Street. He then went on to appear in seven sequels, a crossover with Jason Voorhees, a 2010 reboot, and even a short-lived TV series. For nearly 40 years, Elm Street's Killer of Sleeping Children has been a horror movie icon. But what is Freddy Krueger's middle name? And I can give you a hint if you want. Is it Robert? No. <laughs> well, then we want the hint. Yeah. I'll okay. take the hint. Um, the hint is, I wonder if Freddy keeps his middle name secret to avoid confusion with another horror movie icon who made their de debut in 1988. Uh, man, I don't know this one. I, I, I never heard that he had a middle name. I, I could tell you, or actually I can't tell you, uh, Donald Duck's middle name. I used to know that, but it's gone out my ear. So, uh, we're just going to lock in with a random guest and let you guys talk. What about, um, Matt, what about Chucky? What if it's Charles? Would 88 seems right for a child's play. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say maybe Ripley, but I don't, I think 
88 is too late for alien. And right? that's a weird middle name, right? So yeah. let's, go with, let's go with Chuck. Yeah, we'll go Chuck. That's a great guess. Uh, we really had no idea. We just went uh, Freddy Bartholomew Kruger. <laughs> All right. Uh, points to 500 days of midsummer. It is Charles. Uh, wow. Freddy's Christian name was or is Frederick Charles Kruger. And yes, the horror movie icon from 1988 is Chucky from Child's Play. Yay. All right, question number two. It's all very personal. The first recorded death sentence to take place on land that would become the United States was carried out in 1608 at the Jamestown Colony when Captain George Kendall was executed by firing squad after being convicted of spying for the Spanish government. Within 10 years, what year did the last execution by firing squad take place on U.S. soil? All right, Neil and I have discussed a number that we kind of like and we'll lock in. Yeah, uh, I feel like this would be more recent than one would think. And Matt, uh, you had a thought. I have a number in my head. So what are you what are you thinking? So I was I had known that the the last use of the guillotine was much more recent, um, and a lot of the executions were more recent than you would think they were. Um, so I was I was thinking like 1980. I was gonna go as far as 1990, so we could get all the way to 1980 to 2000. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. We didn't think it was quite as recent, um, so we locked in 1910. Uh, so the answer is uh, 2010, when the state of Utah executed Ronnie Lee Gardner. Uh, Utah actually banned the firing squ squad in 2004, but the law wasn't retroactive, uh, and so there are currently still three men on death row who have chosen firing squad as their preferred method of execution, and uh, that means there will still be three more in the future. Oh, crazy. So, yeah, 2010. Bad news. That's really weird. In Utah, of all places, yeah. too, yeah. Um, all right, question number three, Arnold and Danny. One of the most iconic scenes in horror movie history is of Danny Torrance riding his big blue wheel across the orange patterned carpets of the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. As Danny rounds a corner, he abruptly stops in his tracks when he sees the Grady daughters, Alexi and Alexa, standing at the end of the hallway. Though often referred to as the Shining Twins, are the two girls who portrayed the Grady daughters twins in real life? I say no. I say no twins also. I believe they were real twins, but they look, made to look a little bit different. If you're okay with that, Jeff. Sure. I believe you. Okay, so points to Happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. Uh, yes, Lisa and Louise Burns were both 12 at the shine, at the time that The Shining was filmed. I don't All know right. why I know that, but... I always thought they were twins, and then I was like, no, they're just sisters in the movie, and now they're twins again. So I'll come back around. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. I just got your Arnold and Danny uh, reference there. Nice. Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, the uh, twins. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Question number four. Up and down, up and down. The average pumpkin has approximately 500 seeds, and I could probably eat 100 times that amount in one sitting. But not all seeds are harmless to the human body. What fruit that has more than 7,500 varieties around the world contains seeds that, when ingested, releases cyanide when it comes into contact with digestive enzymes? And I can give you a hint if you want. No, we're locked in. We're locked in. Apples. Pears probably too, but apples. For sure. Apples. I didn't know that. How you like them apples? <laughs> Good as long as you're not eating the seeds. No, you could eat the seeds. It's fine. Yep. Uh, points for both teams. The answer is apples. Yes, they uh, do contain uh, amygdalin, I think it's how it's pronounced, which release a tiny amount of cyanide when ingested. And also apricots, peach, peaches, cherries, and plums also uh, contain uh, have the same the same uh, effect. So if oh, you have don't you. eat the pit. Not a lot of people are eating the the pit though. Yeah, just swallowing peach pits. <laughs> That's much harder than eating that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you um, have an abundance funny. of those that'd, seeds, that'd get you you'd have to eat a lot. You. Yeah, you'd have to eat a lot. Okay, but you could. Yeah, I read. I I don't think people have died from it, but you could get uh, acute toxicity if you have it if you ingest enough. So for question number five, uh, we're going to go back and forth between the two teams. Um, I'm going to, so when it comes to picking a name, uh, death metal bands and schlocky horror movies from the 1980s are cut from the same cloth. Uh, in this back and forth, we're, I'm going to give each team uh, a name. 
each one will get five names and each each one is either the name of a death metal band or the title of a horror movie from the 1980s and all you have to do is tell me which one you think it is okay so two points each to start yeah two points each yep okay uh we will start over here i guess me and jeff okay uh the first one is the doctor and the devils uh let's say it's a film okay Yep, it's a film from 1985. Uh, it's an American movie with Timothy Dalton. Hmm. Second one, Sarcophago. Band. Band, yeah. Correct, yes. It's a Brazilian death metal band. Sounds awesome. Next, Next one, I'm in Sepultura. Ne- Next one is Evil Clutch. Band, probably, right? I'd say so. No, that's a horror movie from 1988. It's an Italian horror movie. Uh, number four, Entrails of a Virgin. Oh, band. Gross. That, that's got to be a band. It's a Japanese horror movie from 1986. Ooh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, next one is Halloween. Oh, that's a band. Oh, yes, they were my favorite. I've seen them. Love yes. them. Yeah. That's right. That is a death metal band from Germany. Uh, next one is Pestilence. Oh, metal band. I'm not pretty sure yeah yep death metal band from netherlands okay number seven uh witchboard movie yeah 1986 surfing witch (laughs) (laughs) skateboarding show me your sex wax (laughs) yeah that was a little bit of a softball as is the next one uh cannibal corpse yeah that's bad love cannibal corpse You bet. That is a death metal band from New York. Uh, Number nine, Necrophagia. Uh, We'll say that that is a movie. That's a band from Ohio. And number 10, Night Beast. Movie. I think movie, yeah. Yep, that's a horror movie from 1982 uh, by director Don Dohler. And uh, it has uh, the music by a little unknown kid named jj abrams you should check it out it's one of my favorite favorite horrible movies of all time well that's eight points for us and how many for you guys we got six all right after five it looks like uh we're gonna have 26 over here at uh happy death day of the dead heat and uh 500 days of midsummer slightly ahead with 28 all right let's move on to question six 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 all right so we had uh, a question like this last year, but it's obviously a new year, so the answers have changed. It's That's So 2021. So this is the second ha- Halloween-themed episode of Triviality that I've hosted, obviously, and uh, after we recorded the first episode last fall, what did Google name as the top five most searched Halloween costumes of 2021? One point for each correct answer, and here are a few hints. One is a Disney character. One is a superhero. Two are animals. And the last one is a classic. Okay, our list of five is locked in. All right. So what do, what are we thinking here? I think the superhero who's hot right now. Uh, Spider Man. Twenty. Yeah, it had to be Spider Man. It's always the Spider Man. Uh, animals probably cats probably one of them right. Cat and dog. Cat and mouse. I think is it mouse the usual popular one. Nah, you're so. right. Let's do dog. Uh, the classic. Classic uh, Dracula. Yeah, vampire. And Dracula. then what's who's the Disney character this year? Who's hot? I mean, is it still Elsa? It's still Elsa. All right, we'll do it. We were thinking Elsa uh, or Frozen, but uh, for the Disney character, I don't know why, but we put Moana. Um, we th- we knew that Batman or the Batman came out in 2021, so we said Batman. Ooh, yeah. uh, we said cat, shark, and uh, Dracula or vampire. Is that left shark? All right, so the. <laughs> so the answers are from number five to number one most searched uh number one the disney character is cruella de vil uh well they did just cruella, movie cruella came with out. uh nobody cared about that nope everyone loved it but it's an easy one to do you just you get a bunch of dogs and you know just get them just get them. <laughs> 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 Yeah, which kid in their, their Corella costume went method and you just got to find that one? <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, child Daniel Day Lewis. I'm going to skin a dog. Uh, number four, the superhero is Spider Man. Oh, yay. Uh, the next two are animals. Uh, number three is a dinosaur. Number four is a rabbit. 
Okay. And the final one is a witch. A witch. Classic, classic. Okay, question number seven. I call it my wedding anniversary. While October 31st is best known as Halloween, it's also known as All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Eve, and Samhain. But what is the day before Halloween, October 30th, better known as? I will accept three possible answers for this question. Reluctant. So they're All locked right. in. Is it All Saints' Day? No, that's the day after. That's November 1st. That's November 1st. So it's All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Day, and we're looking for what the before. It's that it's that like BS one that we've heard before that like we don't really do in Chicago. But Casimir um, Pulaski Day. That, oh, you're talking about uh, Devil's, Devil's Night. Devil's, yes. Because there's a, I believe it's an Emilio Estevez movie uh, called Devil's Night. So yeah, we'll say Devil's Night. Uh, we said All Saints Day. Okay, so points to Happy Death Day. Uh, the answers are Devil's Night, Mischief Night, or Angel's Night. Depends what kind of mood you're in, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Question number eight. A big departure from his role on MASH. Ryan Murphy's Netflix series about Jeffrey Dahmer has been getting a lot of attention lately, uh, mostly due to actor Evan Peters' portrayal of the killer cannibal from Milwaukee. But this isn't the first time that Dahmer has been portrayed on screen. In 2002, the low-budget film Dahmer starred a then-unknown 30-year-old actor in the titular role. Who is he? This is wild, guys. I'm playing Jeffrey Dahmer. Um... Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it, man. I got it. Jeremy Renner? Is Hawkeye? No? Okay. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, he just gave. Yeah, it is. I was trying to think of who was Hawkeye. Yeah, Jeremy Renner. (laughs) Oh my god, I thought he was way older. So Matt gave them a freebie. (laughs) (laughs) I got it, Matt. I got it. I got it. I got it. And Matt had to spit it out. So yeah. (laughs) Bullseye. Yeah, Matt. He was old. He is older. He's exactly twenty years older right now because in two thousand two, Jeremy Renner, who played Hawkeye in the Avengers. was uh, played Jeffrey Dahmer in the movie Dahmer. Matt, you're about to live your own horror movie right now. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming to DC. <laughs> oh, man. All right, question number nine, Golden Glee. The Golden Girls was a show about retired women living together under one roof that ran for seven seasons from 1985 to 1992. Years later, Glee was a show about a high school Glee club that ran for six seasons from 2009 to 2015. The question is, which show has more deceased main cast members of, as of the recording of this episode? <laughs> Golden <laughs> Girls or Glee? Well, that's dark. Now, uh, now, Matt, we want to go dark, right? So let's yeah. let's just let's just go dark then and say Glee. Yeah. Nothing so darker than Glee. All four Golden Girls have passed now. I believe it. Well, yes. Yeah, no, they have. Okay, so that's four. B. Arthur was the last one to 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 go. Okay, I, for some reason I thought Rue McClanahan was, but yeah. So we have four for Golden Girls, and then Betty, I know Betty White. No, Betty White was or the last Betty one. What did yeah. I say? You said B. Arthur. Oh no, I'm sorry, Betty White. Yeah, Betty um, White was the last one. B. Arthur has been gone for a while. No, because they all passed one year after the next, and then and then Betty White lived like six or seven years after that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, then I know for Glee. Um, guy who played uh, or I can't remember his character's name, but Corey, what's his name, died. A lot of problems. A lot of problems. Yes. The guy named Puck who played Puck died. He was in jail for some dark stuff. Um, and uh, um, I can't remember. Oh my god, I can't remember her name. Anyway, another person died. I know for sure. So we just got to beat four, which I don't know. Main cast members. I think there's two more main Glee cast members who've gone. I don't. Jeez, I, I'm not confident not, about actually. it. <laughs> I'm not shall confident. We, shall we just go Golden Girls? Yeah. Hedge our bets. Yeah, let's go Golden Girls. All right, so points for Happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. Yes, the Golden Girls has four deceased main cast members. Betty White, who died at 99, B. Arthur at 86, Estelle Getty at 84, and Rue McClanahan at 76. Whereas Glee only has three. Corey Monteith, who died at 31, Naya Rivera at 33, and Mark Sailing at 35. And an uh, interesting little fact is that the combined ages of all three members of Glee is 99 years, which is the same age that Betty White was when she died. Wow. Wow. So Betty Betty, Light, Betty White lived the lives of three Glee cast members. All right. Uh, final question of the first round. From soup to nuts. Approximately 20 million Americans suffer from one or more phobias, including Samhainophobia, which is a fear of Halloween, Pagonophobia, which is a fear of beards, and Selenophobia, which is a fear of the moon. But what is phobophobia? 
I could be way off on sort of what the category clue gives us, but we're going to lock in with a guess. So he said phobophobia, right? So if it's not the fear, like fear of fear itself, um, I don't know what the soup to nuts hint might be. Is there like a phrase that involves soup to nuts? Um, like everything from soup to nuts or something like that? Maybe no, it's the fear of everything. I don't know if that's a phrase. Yeah, if it's uh. Let's say let's say fear itself, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, fear itself. Um, I thought I was onto something here. I for some reason I thought soup to nuts was like a slogan for like a magazine or something, but I I think I'm way off. So in order to make up for that, uh, we're just gonna say it was a fear of uh Laurel and Hardy movies because they had a movie called From Soup to Nuts. <laughs> All right. Uh, so points to Five Hundred Days of Midsummer. Um, so yeah. So from Soup to Nuts. Soup, you know, um, uh, uh, Jeff picked up a little bit on it with the the uh, the fa or fo. Um, that was not it, but nuts is just crazy. So phobophobia is the fear of a phobia, or just the fear of becoming afraid. Well, after uh, the first round, it looks like five hundred days of midsummer picking up uh, two bonus points uh, on question six plus twenty extra points, bringing their total to fifty. And happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. Uh, looks like they're picking up uh, 30 points, bringing their total to 56. So very close. So the swing round is uh, we have something in common after all. I'm going to give you guys a list of 10 paired celebrities who share a cause of death. And it'll be up to you to uh, figure out what that shared cause of death is. Okay. And th these will not be like in movie deaths, right? These are straight up. No, these are... Life. Okay. Real, real, yes. All right. So the celebrity pairs are Caligula and Elliot Smith, Natalie Wood and Whitney Houston, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Kobe Bryant. I know too soon. Anton Yelchin and Princess Diana, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and Marvin Gaye. King Alexander of Greece and Steve Irwin, David Carradine and Michael Hutchins of In Excess, Bill Paxton and Richard Nixon, Brittany Murphy and Simon Monjack, and Jimi Hendrix and Attila the Hun. All right, we'll be back after a short break. The Unbiased Science Podcast is devoted to objective, critical appraisal of evidence on health topics relevant to listeners' daily lives. I'm Dr. Jess Steyer, a public health scientist with expertise in public health policy, biostatistics, and advanced analytics. And I'm Dr. Andrea Love, an immunologist and microbiologist with expertise in infectious disease immunology, cancer immunology, and autoimmunity. And together, we are the hosts of the podcast. The goal of the Unbiased Science Podcast is to dispel misinformation and misconceptions across an array of science and public health topics. We love to debunk myths and help arm our listeners with information so they can make evidence-based decisions. We hope you'll tune in to the Unbiased Science Podcast, your trusted source for no nonsense, just science. New episodes air every other Wednesday, so make sure to mark your calendars. Hello everyone, it's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. And we are back with our answers. Um, let's get going. Who are the uh, celebrities again? All right. So the celebrity pairs again are the first one is Elliot Smith and Caligula. For this one, I vaguely remember something about Elliot Smith that uh, it was a suicide, though it's a little bit uh, debated to this day if it was, but we just said suicide. 
Um, yeah, I think these were knife wounds. I guess we would say stabbed. All right, yeah, points to Happy Death Day. Uh, yes, this is a, they died as a result of stabbing. All right, uh, the second pair is Natalie Wood and Whitney Houston. Uh, for that one, we said drowning. We also said drowning. Yep, points to both teams. Whitney Houston and Natalie Wood both drowned. Uh, number three is Stevie Ray Vaughan and Kobe Bryant. I believe these were both helicopter crashes, but we'll just say, you know, air crashes. They were both, in fact, helicopter crashes. Yep, both helicopter crashes. Uh, number four, Anton Yelchin and Princess Diana. Uh, although vastly different varieties of said accident, we both said car accidents. Yep, we said uh, car accidents. Yep, points to both teams. They both died as a result of a car accident. Uh, number five, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and Marvin Gaye. You said shot. Yep, we said injuries related to gunshot wounds. Yep, it's very both specific. <laughs> injuries <laughs> related to gunshot wounds, specifically the bullet from the gun. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, both uh, both Arch, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and Marvin Gaye were shot by Marvin Gaye's dad. Okay. You said a, <laughs> they were both uh, shot by Marvin Gaye's dad. So just... He was the original quantum leap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, number number six, uh, King Alexander of Greece and Steve Irwin. We didn't know how specific to be on this one, but we said killed by fish. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we we said uh, killed by an animal. All right, so points to Happy Death Day. Yes, these were Come they on. died as a result of an animal attack. We're, we're taking points okay, on I'll, this one. Come on, that's fine. That's but fine. the king's was a terrestrial yes. animal. You can't just say fish. So yeah, the, land uh, fish. King, <laughs> <laughs> uh, king Alexander. Triviality six: Revenge of the Land Fish. <laughs> uh king alexander of greece he's is pretty interesting he was out uh walking his dog around the palace and he got bit on the le on the shin i believe by a macaque monkey and didn't treat it and died a couple days later can't so, do that what is a that. monkey what's a macaque monkey though is it like a like oh, a... i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you thought the questions were softballs but so so are the jokes <laughs> Cock monkeys, the fish of the land. There they are. Uh, okay, number seven. You got uh, a freebie Michael... with the with the Jeremy Renner, so we're even. We could have come up with that. All right, number seven. Uh, Michael Hutchins of In Excess and David Carradine. Uh, we said hanging, but let us know if you need us to be more specific. Yeah, we. Uh, not be though. We'll we'll take the pleasure out of it. We're just gonna say hanging. Yeah, hanging is fine. We don't need to get into make it. this any worse than it already is. <laughs> uh, okay, number eight, Bill Paxton and Richard Nixon. Said died during surgery. I believe the official cause is stroke. Yeah, so points to Happy Death Day. It was a stroke. Bill Paxton did die during surgery, but he died of a stroke, and Richard Nixon died of a stroke as well. Okay, that's fair. Uh, number nine, Brittany Murphy and Simon Monjack. Very debatable on this one. We we couldn't quite figure out what we were going for, but we said like some sort of poisoning. We guessed drug overdose. Uh, so no points. Uh, both Brittany Murphy and Simon Monjack, who was Brittany Murphy's boyfriend, both died of pneumonia. Um, mm, there's some speculation of what, but uh, yeah. So. Uh, and. And then the I was last talking one, about like they were, they were thinking that it was like mold spores or just it's all very bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre. Yeah, it's really weird. And I know that Matt, you were talking about that documentary, uh, but it, I don't know any. The, literally, the only thing I've ever seen Brittany Brittany uh, Murphy in is uh, that documentary. But it's very fascinating, so you should keep watching. It's pretty weird. Um, and then number ten, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Attila the Hun. So we thought. Jimi Hendrix was related to an OD, but that didn't really make sense for Attila, so we thought it was probably asphyxiation for both. 
Uh, so I've, I've read the Attila the Hun story not too long ago for a question. And if I remember correctly, he uh, had like he got married or something like that. And he got really, really wasted and he had a nosebleed and he choked on his own blood. So we said died of choking. Yeah, I'm going to give points to both actually, asphy asphy asphyxiation and choking. But yes, uh, Jimi Hendrix died from choking on his own vomit. And you're absolutely right, Neil. Uh, Attila the Hun died from choking on his own blood from a nosebleed. After the swing round, it looks like 500 days of Midsommar, uh, picking up 30 points, bringing their total to 80. And Happy Death Day of the Dead Heat, picking up 45 points, bringing their total to 101. All right, on to round two. Uh, question number one. It was my college dorm room number. A human skeleton is made up of 206 bones, and each one falls into one of four categories. What are those four categories? I can give you give you guys a hint if you want. Oh please, sure. sure. I don't know what you mean. Okay, two are uh, based on size, and two categories are based on their shape. Hmm. I wouldn't. I I, I don't know how that to approach help, this. No. I, I'm sure the bone doctor. I've Chase got Ansoc. a couple skeletons in my closet, but I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Chase Ansock is going to be in the Discord raving about this question. <laughs> I know that for sure. Uh, Chase, why didn't you prep us for this ever? He's got a, a a huge back tattoo of these are the four bone types. Wow. He's like uh, what's the what's the um the Ray Fine movie uh the Brett Ratner one um Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Yeah, he's got the Red Dragon like <laughs> tattoo of the bones. Um, I don't know how to approach this. I'm I'm tapping out for us. Uh, Unless you got something to say, Matt. You got something to say? Nope. I was just going to say femurs, femurs. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> I feel like you got your your whole bones. <laughs> Your holy bones, those are the bones with holes in them. The lovely bones. I was thinking, <laughs> as, as dumb as it sounds, what if there's like short bones and long bones? Okay, let's do that. Short okay. bones and long bones. And then you've got... You've got your dense bones and your hollow bones. <laughs> sure. I are we not. a bird? <laughs> yeah. All right, what's the answer, Justin? We've had it with this question. All right, so Neil was on to something there. Yes, uh, the four categories are long bone, short bone, flat bone, and irregular bone. <laughs> A regular bone, Jeff. See, I, I thought I was onto something there. You were, in fact. I recently were. heard, by the way, that 206 is just kind of an average. Um, as, much like when you're a kid, your bones start to fuse together. They can continue to fuse together as you get older, and you can go down to as low as like 180 something. You want one more? Really? <laughs> I'll break your bones. <laughs> See, I, I figured yeah, it was no, no joke. Yeah, it's, I, uh, it's crazy. I figured it was long bone or short bone because if you think of these scientists from the old days when they're like coming up with this, they have no idea what the skeleton is. They're probably like, "This is a long one. This is a short bone." So that's right. That's where my gut like, was. This is a phalanges. This one's irregular. <laughs> <laughs> weird ass hips. <laughs> Used to be called a weird bone. Uh, okay, uh, question number two. Take me home, Mountain Mama. The Mothman first appeared in print on November 6th, 1966, when the Point Pleasant Register ran a story titled Couple See Man-Sized Bird, Creature, Something, in its daily edition. One year later, on December 15th, 1967, the cryptid forever cemented its place in urban legend lore when it was tied to the collapse of the Silver Bridge over the Ohio River, which resulted in the deaths of 46 people. What two states did the Silver Bridge connect? We can lock in. I remember this from the movie. Okay, we're locked in. Are you talking about the Mothman prophecies? You're you're I taking into movie. account the uh, the category name, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Hundred percent. All right, then we're in. Oh, what was the category name again? Don't worry about it, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uh, to say it once, actually. Category name was "Take Me Home, Mountain Mama." Oh, okay. Um, so I thought I thought Point Pleasant was New Jersey. So, just had the devil to worry about up there. I think Justin oh. said, oh, that's true. and he can correct me if I'm wrong, he said Ohio at some point in the question. The Ohio River. The Ohio River. Yeah, the bridge, the bridge spanned the Ohio River. So we want Take Me Home. That's West Virginia. Yeah. I think Ohio and West Virginia touch. I hope they touch. Do you want to guess Ohio and West Virginia? Yeah, let's go for it. Scott Barber, give us some luck. What do we say, Matt? <laughs> we said Ohio and West Virginia. All right, yeah, points all around. The Ohio River uh, flows along the southern part, uh, southern and eastern part of Ohio, 
and the Silver Bridge uh, spanned uh, connected Ohio and West Virginia. Good job. All right, uh, question number three, uh, Blade B. Ruth. You guys kind of touched on this uh, early on when we were talking in the intro, uh, but uh, here we go. When it comes to trick-or-treating, the 1980s created a wave of parental paranoia as stories of tainted and poisoned candy circulated through communities. Some parents took their kids' candy to hospitals to have the candy x-rayed, which is weird, uh, while others stopped letting their children trick-or-treat altogether. From the peak of the hysteria in October 1982 to today, within one, how many children have died from tainted or poisoned trick-or-treat candy from strangers? Do you want to say one to so we get zero to two? Yeah, I think I think it might actually be zero. I but think it's zero. I think, but we'll say one. one, just in case. We'll say negative one. Just, just in case there was a dicks. little botulism in one of them. Yeah. It's it's funny that Justin should say from strangers because I do think that there were a couple who died, but they were poisoned uh like deliberately um but i would say one to hedge our bets but i'm almost positive it's zero i was thinking zero too but yeah maybe we just say one like you said okay yeah so points all around um though there you're right uh though there have been uh, an extremely small number of verified cases of children dying from poison or tainted candy uh all of that all of that candy was tainted by somebody that they knew so the answer is zero and hey, guys, nobody's giving away free free weed to your kids either. So, <laughs> oh yeah, you got to pay for that. Or did you see like the uh, the multicolored fentanyl now that everyone's freaking fentanyl. out about? Yeah, nobody's yeah. giving away free drugs. No. Well, if you come to this household, you're gonna get the limitless pill, naproxen, ibuprofen. <laughs> you're getting medicine. <laughs> and then if you want, if you say trick or treat three times, I'll just rub and slather Tiger Balm all over you. <laughs> It's like when the parents give meal. away the beer to <laughs> yeah. the parents, except for you, it's Tiger Balm. It's Tiger Balm to the parents, the pills to just the kids. Just your glove on. Yeah, just pills one glove. With I the mean, menthol he's going to give it out, but he's not going to put the balm on. That's okay. someone else's job. Yeah, who told you to put the balm on? I was just going to say, who told you to put the balm on? All right. Um, it's funny that this should be the next question. Question number four. That's a big-ass pumpkin, Charlie Brown. In October 2021, Guinness World Records named a 2,702-pound pumpkin the heaviest ever on record what country what country was the pumpkin grown in and i'll give you a hint uh the hint is i hear there are absolutely no houses available to rent in this particular region of the country where this record-breaking pumpkin was grown all right we're we're in oh Mol moldova is this a seinfeld reference oh and then there's no country or houses available to rent where's george always saying he's gonna no, no, it's where, yeah, 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 I think you're right, Moldova. Yeah, because that's where, um, I thought it's where Elaine, oh, no, that's where she goes with the, the maestro, I thought. Anyway, yeah, let's go Moldova. Matt? No, the, the maestro has a villa in Tuscany. That's and right. I, doesn't, I believe he doesn't want anyone there, so it's Italy would be the country. That is correct. The pumpkin was grown in Italy and more specifically in the region of Tuscany. Good job. Mm. There are no houses in Tuscany? That one. <laughs> And our, our behind the trivia episode with Mark Metcalf, Mark Metcalf was thanks to Justin. That's oh. your friend. That Mark Metcalf is my friend. Hello, Mark, if you're listening. Um, okay, question number five. This was a Pizza Hut. What retail store did founder Joe Marver first open as a pop-up shop in the Castro Valley Mall in San Francisco in 1984? As of October 31st, 2021, the chain had close to 1,400 stores open all across the country though that number dr drastically plummeted the following week. We're like to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they it drastically changed. Is that Spirit Halloween? Because they close all their stores? Oh, right yeah. Halloween? Yeah, it's got to be. Um, yeah, because it started in 88 and it's built up 1,400 stores. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, I had the yeah, answer. Huh? This was a Pizza Hut or whatever you said. Yeah, <laughs> Spirit Halloween. You're coming to a Sears near you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The answer is Spirit Halloween. Good job. After five in the second round, it looks like uh, the team over at 500 Days of Midsommar uh, picked up uh, 40 points, bringing their total to 120. And uh, Happy uh, Death Day of the Dead Heat picking up 30 points, bringing our total to 131. All right, question number six. He's just a Spider-Man ripoff. Whose venom is more deadly, a rattlesnake or a black widow spider? It's gotta so be. Is that per, per dose? Or per bite? Per ounce. Oh. 
Okay, we're locked in. All right, so he says it's per per volume, basically, and not per instance of, of dosage. So I would say then Black Widow. I would think you'd be more likely to die from a rattlesnake bite, but it's probably due to the high amount that's delivered. Mm. Uh, well, we uh, we discussed. We didn't really discuss, but in my head I discussed. And um, <laughs> I feel like people have survived rattlesnake bites quite a lot, but I don't think many people have ever survived a Black Widow bite. Leaned that way, and it's smaller, probably packs a big punch. So we said Black Widow. Okay, so points all around, um, but Ken, you were right. Neil, you were wrong. Uh, so the the venom of, <laughs> the the venom of a black widow spider is approximately fifteen times more deadly than a, a rattlesnake's venom, but just because of the sheer amount of venom that goes into a person with each rattlesnake bite, uh, obviously um, it it's usually more deadly. So approximately 50, ten to fifteen people die in the United States every year from poisonous snake bites, just in general, whereas only four to eight people die from poisonous spider bites a year. So. Mm. Just remember, um, it's venom if they bite you, poison if you bite them. And if either one, <laughs> and if either one bites you, uh, please get treated. Yes, ASAP. I believe the most poisonous snakes uh, are garden snakes, a certain garden snake, and then a, a Japanese snake where if you eat them, you're, you're dead. From my research. Okay, so I'm yeah. safe. That's well, fine. So I'm not about to eat a, a snake anytime yeah. soon. So I should be fine. <laughs> And the, the, the category was he's just a Spider-Man ripoff. It was actually just about Venom, not about Spider-Man. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, right, question number seven. What we all hope to leave this world with, what is the name of the creative technique that was invented by bored French surrealists looking to pass the time? This process typically begins with a written word or a drawn image, which is then passed to one, another person who adds to the piece by only looking at what the previous collaborator added to the composition. So, Matt, this is like a game of telephone, but with painting. Right. I don't know what that would be called, I... but what would I like to leave this world with? Let's call this game Dignity. <laughs> you draw Dignity? I can show it to the cat, because he'll get it. I, notoriety? That notoriety, sounds, notoriety sounds like a pretty cool game name. It's yeah. good. good answer. I like that. You want to go with that? Notoriety. Sure. Yeah. All right. So no points with this question. Uh, the answer is Exquisite Corpse. Uh, so this game got oh. its name when Surrealist first played the game and came up with the first sentence ever created with the game, which was, quote, the exquisite corpse shall drink the new wine. It sounds like it's from a Cronenberg movie. Long live yeah. the new flesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, need to, I need to watch well, that new one. <laughs> yeah, and the exquisite course. The exquisite course drink. What is it? Drinks the new wine. The yes, the exquisite corpse shall drink the new wine. Yeah. All right. On to question number eight. It was a house of horrors, but now it's a nice four bedroom, three bath with a sex dungeon. What U.S. state has the strictest real estate laws when it comes to informing potential home buyers of deaths that have occurred in or on the property? You know what? If that reduces the price of the property, I'm in. I'm I'm all for it. Um, at in this market, you know, in this economy, like I don't want a murder house, but I'll take it if the price is right. <laughs> for like, uh, Matt, you want to pick <laughs> one of the fifty? Yeah, I I'll I'm gonna base it based on the likelihood that someone would die in their home, and the likelihood that they would have tough real estate rules. Okay, rules. we're locked in. I, so I I read about this or saw it in a TV show or a movie and I'm I'm trying to remember it but I I they I saw a comedic sketch about it actually. I'm imagining Werner Herzog as your realtor. Yeah right yeah I was, well, it's making me think a little bit yeah of Indiana. Um, um, what do you think would have strict real estate laws? I I, I know this too. New York, I mean. No, uh, maybe, but I I mean Florida, a lot of people die. Yeah, probably. Um. Oh, but they don't love laws. That's true. They they always they always govern just a little bit under the law, and it gets really annoying for people behind them. Um, I think um, I God, I knew this. I'm so sorry. I knew this fact, and I've I've forgotten it. I don't know. Yeah, I'll let you pick because well, I, I I never knew this fact. So what what does your gut tell you? 
my gut's wrong. It's either California or I believe California. They like to they warn people of a lot of stuff. All right, you want to go California? Sure. Okay. Uh, Matt, based on their love of legislating everything, I also thought California. All right, yeah. So points all around California. Uh, the law requires that any death, natural or unnatural, that occurred in the past three years in or on the property must be disclosed to any potential home buyers. I feel like this question might uh, benefit Matt a little bit more than everybody else. It, the category is put a pumpkin in it. Starbucks pumpkin spice latte was first introduced almost 20 years ago in 2003. But does the pumpkin spice latte of 2022 have any actual pumpkin in it? Let me just pull up the syrup bottle here. Look at the ingredients. <laughs> we can lock in. Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like when I used to work at uh, Starbucks, not the coffee conglomerate, a different place. Um, <laughs> I think you worked for Starbucks, actually. Yeah, I was on a You're I was on, on a boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I I think it didn't have any pumpkin in it when I worked there. Um, but Highly I, unlikely it has pumpkin in it. But he said as of 2022, outrage. Howard Schultz wanting to make friends again. Now he's back in the company. Maybe they actually did put some pumpkin in it. What's your reasoning? What do you think? Maybe. It would be very little, though, because the pumpkin flavor is not pumpkin, as no, far right. as I'm concerned. I, I could be way off, but I'm just thinking because it was specified 2022. So I'm thinking maybe there's like 1% pumpkin. Uh, no, actually, I believe that around 2017, 2018, somewhere around then, that they did add pumpkin wow. puree to the mix of cinnamon ginger cloves and all the other things that actually make pumpkin spice so i think it does have very little but some <laughs> pumpkin puree in it there you go yes yeah, so uh matt's absolutely right so but the year was 2015 uh yes in 2015 mm -hmm. after many customer complaints starbucks finally added uh pumpkin to their pumpkin spice latte all right uh last question of the round number 10 it's in his nature to tease since we started regulation with freddie's middle name we'll end it with jason's original name what first name did screenwriter victor miller initially give the hockey masked killer hmm archibald <laughs> yeah rudiger Voorhees. Uh, rudiger millhouse arnold palmer loves the team <laughs> arnold palmer Yes. <laughs> Arnold Palmer Voorhees. Um, so in his nature to tease, I'm not getting anything from the tease. If I hear nature, I think nature boy, Ric Flair. I don't think it's Rick Voorhees. Um, hey, wait, is this his middle name or his original first name? His original name. His original okay. before it was Jason. Okay. So I don't think it's Rick. It's not very menacing. Can you think of any, anyone else that teases? Rick. <clears throat> Yeah, this one, I have no idea. Yeah, let's say uh, in his nature to tease. We'll say, uh, what do you think, Bully? No, that's not the name. Yeah, we'll say Bully. Good old Bully Voorhees. No. Uh, so no points. Um, when you tease somebody, you're you're joshing. The answer is no. John. Oh. Jason, Jason was originally uh, named Josh, which was, the, um, which was uh, Victor Miller's oldest son's name. But then he combined Josh and his son, Ian, to become to come up apparently with Jason or you know Jason was a thing before so yeah he came up with Jason so at the end of regulation it looks like team 500 days of midsummer is going to be ending with 155 points and team happy death day of the dead heat is going to be uh, ending with 161 going into the final round just a reminder to everyone you should uh, come join us we haven't talked about this in a long time but we're on the crop obviously on Facebook can follow us on social media at Triviality Pod and also our Discord. Our Discord keeps growing every day. Uh, lots of new folks uh, coming in saying hello. If you join us on Patreon, you actually uh, will get a dis uh, Discord code. You can come join us over there as well. So uh, come say hi to everyone. Matt's in there uh, doing a bunch of uh, board games and stuff. Is that right, Matt? That's true. We've been playing pretty much every Thursday, Fridays, and Saturday nights. A bunch of us get together. We do Jackbox games. We play code names. It's super fun. Come join the community and hang out. Sounds great. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, if you uh, if you're done listening to Triviality for the week and you've done uh, you've listened to all the bonus episodes and the Patreon bonus episodes, go play some board games with Matt and friends and everyone else on the Discord. Yeah, do your homework first. Listen to us, and then you can play your games. 
There you go. And just to add to the uh, fright of the episode, me and Neil are having a little debate about whether we should get the uh, points for the fish question. Uh, we came to the agreement, the frightful agreement, that if we win by five, then Neil will kill me. And that seems reasonable. <laughs> we will be yeah. sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your uh, categories for the final round are villains, monsters, psychopaths, creepies, and crawlies. All right, uh, both teams are going all in for their wagers, um, and we're just reaching inside the uh, the little uh, Halloween bag and see what kind of kind of questions we pull out. So, what do we have, Justin? All right, question number one is villains. Most horror movie buffs know Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger and Kane Hodder as Jason Voorhees, but what iconic horror movie character is actor Roger L. Jackson best known for? Question number two, monsters. When they debuted, what classic monster was first described as being a beautiful, eight-foot-tall creature with proportional limbs, long, flowing black hair, and teeth of a pearly whiteness? Question number three, psychopaths. While Anthony Hopkins will forever be bonded to Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, who did director Jonathan Demme originally approach to play the role? Question four, creepies. In the early 1800s, adults in Great Britain were eating more sugar than ever, and they had the rotting teeth to prove it. Wealthy people could afford dentures, which were often carved out of ivory, but only the richest of the rich could afford the most expensive expensive dentures of the time. What were these dentures made out of? And finally, number five, crawlies. In measurement, centi, C-E-N-T-I, denotes a hundred or one hundredth of something, and milli, M-I-L-L-I, denotes a thousand or one thousandth of something. But while an average centipede does have close to a hundred legs, within 50, how many legs does an average millipede have? All right, we have the questions. We'll be right back after a short break. All right, our answers are all locked in. And Matt, we will see what fate we will reap tonight. It might be grim. It might be grim. (laughs) All right, so question number one, villains. uh, What iconic movie horror character is Roger L. Jackson best known for? We tossed around a few here, Matt. Uh, we have 30 points on the line. We said the Leprechaun. We said um, Michael Myers. Yeah, baby. Um, and <laughs> lastly, we said Pinhead, and that's the one we're sticking with. Uh, I, I noticed in the question here um, that you didn't say uh, who did Roger L. Jackson play or perform as um, because uh, it was just his voice, and we believe it's Ghostface. Yeah, good job. To, wow. uh, happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. Yes, uh, Roger L. Jackson was the voice of Ghostface in the Scream franchise. All right, question number two, monsters. Uh, what classic monster was described as a beautiful eight-foot-tall creature with proportional limbs, long flowing black hair, and a teeth of a pearly whiteness? We were liking um, Dracula for this one, but the the eight feet and a couple missing features uh, prevented us from picking Dracula, and we're going with Frankenstein's monster. Oh, mm. I didn't, we didn't even think about that one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about the long flowing black hair, but we just guessed uh, werewolf, Wolfman. Yeah, so points to 500 Days of Midsommar. It is Dr. Frankenstein's creature from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1818. Good job. Question number three, psychopaths. While Anthony Hopkins will forever be bonded to Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, who did director Jonathan Demme originally approach to play the role? Well, we don't know. Uh, We know Brian Cox portrayed him before, so we thought maybe he was invited back, Brian Cox. He tortured all his victims by going, ba da ba 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 Yeah, that's the weirdest thing, the I McDonald's know. commercials. You know, some ad, ad exec was like, oh, I love Succession. I really want Brian Cox to do it. And he's probably like, pay me money and I'll say whatever. Um, so this one, that works, yeah. This one. Um, <laughs> I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this one threw me for a little bit of a loop because um, I could have my, my film lore incorrect, but I believe at one point, Gene Hackman was going to play Hannibal Lecter and direct the movie himself, but he said no, but... Um, I believe Jonathan Demme, uh, when he was chosen a director, wanted Sean Connery, and we went with Sean Connery. Mm. 
Yeah, so points to Happy Death Day. It is Sean Connery. There's a clue in there. Uh, well, Anthony Hopkins will forever be bonded to Hannibal Lecter. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, Sean Connery turned it down because he said the script was, quote, disgusting. And actually, Anthony Hopkins, the first time he read the script, also turned it down because he said he thought it sounded too much like a, quote, kids movie. So <laughs> two, two very different interpretations of the same material. The tucking uh, scene is too childish. <laughs> uh, question number four, creepies. In the early 1800s, what were the richest people of Great Britain having dentures made out of? We said human teeth. Um, we went with a lesser known Red Hot Chili Peppers song and said porcelain. So uh, points to 500 Days of Midsummer. It is human teeth mm -hmm. pulled from corpses. Wow. We um, are neck and neck here. We're at each other's throats, so to speak. We are. We talked about human bone, and we're like, well, maybe that's too easy, and we thought porcelain would be a little bit more. You know, fine china. Grab your china, guys. Turn in the teeth. So it's coming down to the number guess, people. Old toilet mouth. So this <laughs> is <old> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> toilet mouth Johnson. <laughs> Uh, so just a, a little oh, seriously, bit. Seriously, guys, I'm just trying to be your friend here, guys. Okay, come on. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Um, yeah, so after the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, uh, corpse teeth became a huge commodity on the black market because there were so many dead soldiers. So they were ripping teeth out of dead soldiers and putting them in rich people's mouths. So Check out uh, my new death metal band, Corpse Teeth. <laughs> I think that was a horror movie in the 80s. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, we're known as OPT, other people's teeth. <laughs> uh, last question, Crawley's. Uh, within 50, how many legs does a millipede have? All right, here we go. I'm peeking over at your answer, and it is not in our range. So it's coming down to this. We say 225. We said 350. All right. So <laughs> happy death day. Yeah, the answer is 300. Oh. So you just come in with Woo. it. Yeah, good job. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That's disappointing. But at least I, I don't get killed by Neil now. Well, I kind of want to now. Oh, no, you're dead for sure. <laughs> oh, you're dead. <laughs> oh, you're dead. Don't even know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was this one. <laughs> I'm going to set a pack of Wolverines on Ken. Uh, after the final round, as Ken said, uh, each question went back and forth between both teams, meaning the final question was the one that was going to decide it. So losing 30 points in the final round is 500 days of Midsommar, ending with 125. But today's cream of the crop with 191 points is Happy Death Day of the Dead Heat. In you, Triviality, I'm talking to you. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Would you be the cream of the crop? I'd be the cream of the crop so hard. Ken is tucking right now. <laughs> no. No. Well, we don't know that for sure, so we'll determine it. My legs are crossed. <laughs> uh, that was an, uh, Sorry, guys, for putting that image in your head. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Justin, that was an awesome game. Uh, great questions, great mix of questions. Uh, it, even, I think it bested the first one, so I think the sequel was better this, in this case. Oh, perfect. Thanks. No, I love doing this every year, and uh, you know, this is definitely my wheelhouse because I just love all things kind of weird and creepy, so thanks for having me again and look forward to next year. But if you want to go with somebody else, that's fine, but you're all dead to me. So. You're on the short, <laughs> you're on the short list. <laughs> uh, anyone you'd like to give shout-outs to? Any final words uh, from you uh, before we kill you? I yeah I'll say um because I'm because I am a terrible parent I'll say hi to my kids Gray and West because I usually listen to this with them in the room they usually just ignore it but whatever and uh thanks to my wife for uh putting the kids to bed tonight it was great no I'm just gonna sit down here in the basement and drink and just tell her that it went for like six hours long it's a six hour recording <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Well, that will do it. We want to say thanks to Justin one more time. Thanks to Matt, Jeff, Neil, and myself. That was Triviality. <laughs> <laughs>
We got the free uh, fish. Okay. You're going to win by five points then. That's what's going to happen. You're still up. No, I know. Uh, okay. 